Okay, today we are going over CC1 4.2.2 review and preview. Um, we're going to start with problem number 58. Draw two different simple geometric shapes, such as rectangles or right triangles, on graph paper. Okay, so I'm going to start with doing that. And I'm using a purple pen so you can see it. I know my hand's a little large. I'm going to make a rectangle that is 3 by 4. See if I can make my hand a little bit smaller. Okay. So remember yesterday I said we need to label our rectangles. I need to know these sides. I'm not going to count them. Okay, so one of my shapes is going to be the rectangle, and the other one I'm going to do a triangle. I'm going to go two and four. It's a right triangle. So this is the base is two and the height is four. Okay, so part A. Choose one shape and enlarge it so that each side is twice as long as the original. So I'm going to just pick my rectangle to be part A. So each side has to be twice as long. So three, twi two of three is six. So it's going to go six long, six down. And I'm going to redraw my six got lost okay and four two of four is eight so it's gonna go eight across There's four five six seven eight and then down six again and then over eight again okay that's my enlargement for part a for part B, it says to choose the other shape and reduce it so that each side is half the length of the original. Well, one half of two is one. One half of four is two. And then I'm done. That's it. Okay. Problem 59. Study the pattern below. Sketch and label the fourth and fifth figures. Then predict how many dots will be in the 100th figure. Write an expression you can use to determine the number of dots in any figure. Show your work. Okay. So figure one has three dots. Figure two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Figure three has nine. It's growing by three, so figure four, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Figure five, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm by three every time. I'm, I'm adding three and it's this top row, right? Because that this figure one's all the bottom, figure two, figure three, figure four, figure five, and figure six. I would add three more. Okay. The other thing I notice, well, what's one times three? Three. Two times three? Six. Three times three is nine. Four times three is 12. Five times three is 15. So if I take the figure number and I multiply it by what I'm growing by, which is three, then I'll get the number of dots. So the 100th figure would be, well, it's 100 times three which is 300, it would have 300 dots. 
Okay, now my expression, what if I don't know my figure number? Okay, this 100 is my figure number, okay? The three is what it's growing by, but what if, what if I wanted it to figure out for any figure number, okay? So it, it is, we figured out it's my figure number times three, but I need to use something in place of this because I don't want to write figure number each time. Well, it's x times three. If x is the figure number. Okay, on the back side, problem number 60. Simplify each of the following absolute value expressions. Show your work. Okay, first one. Absolute value of 25 and 6 tenths. Negative 25 and 6 tenths is 25 and 6 tenths. The absolute value of negative 11 and 4 tenths is 11 and 4 tenths. I add them together. Six plus four is 10, five plus one plus one is seven, two plus one is three, the answer is 37. The opposite of the absolute value of negative three and two sevenths. So what I do first is what is the absolute value of negative three and two sevenths? It's three and two sevenths. What's the opposite of that? Okay. Part C, the opposite value, or the absolute value, not opposite value, absolute value of zero and 375 thousandths is zero and 375 thousandths, plus the absolute value of negative five eighths is a positive five eighths it's a distance. Now I have a decimal and a fraction that I'm adding. I want them both in the same form. I'm going to go with decimals because I know how to go a lot easier from 5 eighths to a decimal than putting 375 over 1,000 and simplifying. So I'm going to grab a calculator, okay? And my calculator I'm going to put in five divided by eight. Okay, five divided by eight is zero and 625 thousandths. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite that up here. So it's zero and 375 thousandths plus zero and 625 thousandths. And then I can set it up lining up my decimal points. Five plus five is 10. Seven plus one is eight plus two is 10. Six plus three is nine plus one is 10. One plus zero plus zero is one. The answer is one. Okay, problem 61. We need to compute each sum or difference, show your work. You notice that I've already started. I've taken my common, my denominators and I'm trying to find a common denominator, okay? So part A, I have two thirds plus one fifth. If I look here, my three and my fives, I notice that the 15 is common. That's the first multiple that they both go into that's the same. So I know that my new fractions are going to be out of 15. Okay, I'm going to set up a giant one and I'm gonna have to turn my paper here. Two thirds with a giant one times something equals something out of 15. I'm gonna do it for one fifth as well. 
Okay. I have to figure out what goes into my giant one. So three times five is 15. Two times five is 10. Five times three is 15. So one times three is three. Okay, so two thirds came first. So it's 10 fifteenths plus three fifteenths, which equals 13 fifteenths. I can't simplify it. So that's my answer. Going to part B, I look down here in my list of multiples, eight. So I know my new fractions are gonna be out of eight. Seven eighths is already out of eight, so I don't have to change anything with that. I just have to take one fourth, figure out what I have to do to make it out of eight. Well, four times two is eight, so one times two is two. Seven eighths minus two eighths equals five eighths. Part C. Before, before I do anything, I'm going to take these numbers and make them improper fractions. So I take my whole number, one, I multiply it by three, which is three. And then I add my numerator, which is two. So three plus two is five. It's five thirds plus three times four is 12, plus one is 13 fourths. Okay, my denominator stayed the same. I didn't go away from the three and the four for my denominators. So my multiples that I listed here are three and four. So I'm going to go and I'm going to find the first one that they both they, they would both go into, which is 12. So my new fractions are going to be out of 12. Okay, and I'm going to extend my work up here. So I have 5 thirds, giant 1, something out of 12. 13 fourths. Something in a giant one is something out of 12. Three times, one, two, three, four is 12. Five times four is 20. Four times three is 12. 13 times three. Three times three is nine. Three times one is three. It's 39. Twenty plus thirty-nine is fifty-nine over twelve. I can turn it back into a mixed number. I say, well, how many times does twelve go into fifty-nine? I know it goes into sixty-five times, but it's not sixty, so it has to be four. And because I'm one away from sixty, I know that there's eleven pieces left, so I could have either of these answers, and it's right. Okay, for part D, seven minus three and two fifths, I am going to make them into fractions. If I have a whole number, it's always out of one. Minus three times five is 15, plus two is 17 over five. I'm gonna look here, ones just count by ones. Five is my least common multiple. Okay, 17 over five is already out of five. So I just need to take seven over one, my seven, multiply it by something that gets it out of five. One times five is five. So seven times five is 35. I'm gonna extend my work over here. 35 minus 17, five minus seven, I have to borrow. 15 minus seven is eight. Two minus one is one. It equals 18 fifths. Five goes into 18 three times. It's right here. With three out of five 
remaining. Okay, problem 62. Find each quotient without using a calculator. Okay, so we are doing long division. You'll notice I already have them set up, okay? And you'll kind of notice right here, I have my nines listed out. It's because I'm dividing by nine. If I have this cheat sheet, I know how many times nine goes into whatever number I need. Okay, and I can do that with 16. Um, okay, 16, 32 plus, six, plus 16 is 48. 48 plus 16 is 64 plus 16 is 80 plus 16 is 96 two three four five six i do it three more times plus 16 is 112 plus 16 is 128 plus 16 is 144. Okay. Now the reason I do this, okay, is because I'm not super good at dub double digit long division. Okay, this is gonna help. Even if it's single digit, this is gonna help me if I'm not good at my multiplication facts. Okay. Now the last one I'm gonna set up is part A. Okay. Now, this one's tricky because my divisor is a decimal. I don't want that there. I, I do not want it as a decimal. So I have to multiply it by 10 to move that decimal point. Which means if I do it here, I have to do it here. So it really is 15 divided by or 425 divided by 15, okay? Because I don't want to I don't want to divide by a part, okay? I want to divide by a whole number. So my last cheat sheet list that I'm going to write down is for my 15s. So 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105. 125, no, yes, 90 plus 15 is 105, plus 15 is 120, plus 15 is 135, yes, that's right, sorry, I made one small mistake. So I should have nine here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, 15, does it go into four? No. So I put a zero. Instead of putting the zero down here and subtracting, I can just move over to the next number. 15 goes into 42 two times. 15 times two is 30. 2 minus 0 is 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. I drop my 5. 15 goes into 125. I'm going to cross this out because we rewrote it here and I'm getting confused. 15 goes into 125 9 times, which is 120. No, 8 times. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 125 minus 120 is five. Now, I, I don't want remainders. I'm going to keep going. Okay. 15 goes into 50 three times, which is 45. I'm going to subtract. 50 minus 45 is five. Add another zero, keep going, goes in three times, 
which is 45, get five, add a zero. This is gonna keep going forever because I'm gonna keep getting 50. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna make sure that my decimal point goes straight up, okay? So my answer is 28 and we're repeating it with threes. My repeating sign is that, that line above it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for part B and I want you to notice how I'm using this cheat sheet. 16 goes into five zero times. 16 goes into 58, one, two, three, three times. Three times 16 is 48. 58 minus 48 is 10. Drop down my nine. 16 goes into 109, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times. Six times 16, one, two, three, four, five, six is 96. Nine minus six is three. I have to borrow here. 10 minus nine is one. Drop my two. 16 goes into 132 eight times, which is 128. Two minus eight I can't do, I'm gonna borrow. 12 minus eight is four. Okay, now I'm gonna add my zero, drop it down. 16 goes into 40 two times which is 32. 40 minus 32 is eight. I'm gonna drop down my zero, it's 80. 16 goes in 80, one, two, three, four, five times, which is 80, and that means I'm done. My last step is to bring up my decimal point because my answer is 36 and 825 thousandths. Okay, part C, I'm gonna use my cheat sheet here. Nine goes into five, zero times. Okay, well, my number ends, but I can add a decimal point and a zero. I'm not changing my number. Five minus zero is five, bring down my zero. Nine goes into 50, one, two, three, four, five times. Nine times five is 45, 50 minus 45 is five. Bring down a zero, 50 again, which we know is five. 50 minus 45 is five. I add a zero, it's 50 again. Wait a minute, I have another pattern. Okay, so my step. I have to move my decimal point straight up. My answer is zero and 55 hundredths repeated because it's gonna keep going and going and going. Okay, so that's my way of ending it and showing that it's repeating is that repeating bar. As always, if you have any questions, please make sure to come and ask.